They are parallel. How many points lie on both lines? <laughs> yeah, or? How many points lie on both lines? Two. Come on, somebody said it. Zero. None. How many points lie on both lines? None. If the points lie on both lines, then the lines either cross or they're the same line, in which case there would be infinitely many, right? But, but what is the solution to this system of equations? No, it's not oh, undefined. So there are no solutions. We can write this a number of ways. We can say there are no solutions. Oh, I think the mic is back on. No solutions. Or we can say it's the empty set, or we can say it's the null set. So this is the empty set, and this is the null set. It's like a zero with a cross through it, or a cross you know, that, not a cross. A zero with a line through it, at an angle too, not straight up and down. Right? And, and at that angle, not even the other angle. Okay, so there are no solutions to this system. The solution set is the empty set or the null set. Graph the following system of equations. So you get to choose how to graph these, I guess. So the first one, I'm going to go with slope intercept. Okay, so y equals negative 2x plus 4. Go down 2 over 1, down 2 over 1, down 2, down 2, down 2. Up to, up to, up to. Draw a straight line. Well, I can bring back the line tool as much as it's let me down. Let's label this while we're at it. I think I forgot to label one of the other lines. Y equals negative 2x plus 4. <clears throat> and 6y is less. You know, I can do that with the intercepts because I'm lazy. So the x-intercept is 2 and the y-intercept is 4. Right? You can kind of see that. So the x-intercept is 2. Oh, I think we found a point of intersection. And the y-intercept, oh. I think we found a lot of points of intersection. Yeah, so what's special about these lines? They're the same lines. It's almost the answer to half the blanks, right? They are the same. Well, in this case, we say they are the same line. How many points lie on both lines? Now you can say infinitely many. What is the solution to this system of equations? Well, we need to be a little more specific, right? So the solution to the system is any ordered pair that satisfies that equation. There are infinitely many points, but that doesn't mean every point is a solution. Zero, zero is not a solution. Right? It's not one of the infinitely many points. But each of the points that we filled in when I graphed by slope intercept, those are all solutions, as are any point that's on the line. So any ordered pair that satisfies this uh, equation is a solution to the system. Given a system of two linear equations, how can you determine whether there will be no solution? Same slope? Need something else. Same slope and? Okay, parallel. Different y-intercepts, yeah? Same slope but different y-intercepts. Right, which will make them parallel line.
one solution. What's going to give us one solution? Okay, but what's the characteristic? Different slopes. If they have different slopes, then they can't be parallel, <coughs> which means they also can't be the same line. Okay? So then they will cross in one place. Right? They'll have one point of intersection. Infinitely many solutions. Yeah, so same slope and same y-intercept, right? Which does make them the same line, but <clears throat> remember, we're looking for these characteristics, right? So if you look at a pair of lines algebraically, rigorously, and you say, oh, these have different slopes, so I know that this system will have one solution, <clears throat> right? And there will actually be a solution. Okay. Or, hey, these lines have the same slope, and now what? Oh, the same y-intercept, they're the same line, there's infinitely many, or they have the same slope, but different y-intercepts, they're parallel lines, there will be no solution. For 2x minus 3y equals 6, determine another equation so the system has no solution. edit that over but <laughs> so how do we get no solution what do we need to have same slope so you know if we just go with 2x minus 3y those lines will have the same slope right because the slope is only dealing with the y and the x the values would you know because you're going to move the x value over then divide by the coefficient of y. <clears throat> so if they're the same, you're going to get the same m, the same slope. So all we need is a different number here. Because right? that now means we'll have a different y-intercept. Okay. So these give the same slope, right? Or, or we can do multiples of this. Right? Could be 4x minus 6y could be 10x minus 15y, right? Anything that's going to yield the same slope. So we should say here, or uh, multiples of these, or multiples of these. But not the same multiple of the constant. And that could be any number that isn't 6. OK, because it would say multiple of the constant, then we'd have the same line. right? So if I had 8x minus 12y equals 24, I would divide everything by 4 and end up with 2x minus 3y equals 6. Like if we look back at the example here, if, if you, you know, so 3y is equal to negative uh, 6x plus 12, y is equal to negative 2x plus 4. Same line, right? So they're multiples of each other. So these can be multiples, right? Multiply this by 5, this by 4. Great. Okay, leave them the same. 2x minus 3y just changes so it's not 6. Right, and they will be parallel lines, right? But that because they'll have the same slope, but they'll have different y-intercepts. Okay, one solution. What's one solution? Different slopes. Go, give me an example. Three x. Really? You give me that? You might as well just go x minus y equals three. So this just has a different slope, right? All we need is that they are not multiples, right? So not, not, not the same multiple. Of two and negative three. Okay. So just 
just anything. Anything has a different slope, right? Just need a different slope. Infinitely many solutions. What could be infinitely many solutions? Yeah, so give me one. That's the same. Let's not be so obvious as to say, oh look, here it is exactly the same, you know, so at least multiply it by two or something. If you want to disguise it, you could multiply it by negative two, because then it, ooh, that's a negative one and that's a positive one. So. Okay. What's next? To solve a system of equations graphically on the TI-83, 84, TI-83+, plus, TI-84+, plus silver edition, your fancy color ones that you have, whatever, right? They should all basically be kind of the same, so, yeah. All right, so the only thing that we can graph is if it's in the form y equals, right? That's all our calculators do. So we need to rearrange the two equations so they are in slope-intercept form. We select y equals and enter the two equations, one in y1 and one in y2. We select second calc, arrow down to five intersect, and press enter or press five. The screen will say first curve, press enter. The screen will say second curve, press enter. The screen will say guess, use the left or right arrow keys to move the cursor close to the point of intersection, press enter. The x and y coordinates of the point of intersection will appear at the bottom of the screen. So that's what I do, the only thing is I do this. I do this here. Okay. So I move to the point of intersection first. After I say intersect, then I move the cursor to the point of intersection and just hit enter three times. Right. And again, what it's doing is it's asking for the first curve, the second curve, and then for you to guess. So you need one of these now, right? We ask you to solve graphically, and you walk in with your, hey, I've been using this since grade six calculator. Too bad, right? Like, honestly. You know that you've needed one. You know that there's a test coming up for this. You know that the test coming up for this is on the 29th. You have until the 29th to get yourself a TI 8384. Just go to cash converters, pick one up there, cheap, stolen from a student at this or another school, I'm sure, or pawned by them because they don't need it anymore. Uh, just make sure it works, right? That it turns on, that the display, you know, hit graph has got, you know, like no bleeding liquid crystal sitting there or something like that, right? Because that, that will happen. I mean, they should be making sure they work before they take them in. But. Okay, systems of nonlinear equations. Solve the non following nonlinear system by using a graphing tool. Make sure that you find all solutions. All right, so what are we going to do? We are going to use a graphing tool like this. So, oh, I can't work off of that, can I? I hate this thing. <laughs> All right, so we're going to go to y equals. Y equals, I just went to second. We're going to enter that first equation, so x. To get the cubed, there is a cubed, but you can just use the caret, which is the upside down v. 2x, then you can use the squared key for squared, right? Minus 3x minus 13. And you can press enter and go to y2, which is 2x squared plus 4x minus 7. Now, your calculator will have been cleared before any test, right? So when you go to graph, it's going to use the standard graphing window. And the standard graphing window is from negative 10 to 10 and negative 10 to 10. Okay, so we can see we got a couple of intersection points here, and likely one off screen up here. Right, because I think this line is steeper than that line, and eventually they're going to cross up there. So uh, we can start off by finding this point of intersection and then this point of intersection. Oh, sketch the graphs on the grid shown and highlight the solutions. Okay, well, I'll, I'll leave that for you. So let's find it. Okay, so we go second function, calc, and number five is intersect. First curve. Now there are 
probably three points of intersection here, right? What I'm going to do is move to the first point of intersection. This tells me where it is. It's at 0, negative 13 right now, so it's down here. It's on the curve y equals x cubed, right? So it's telling you this is the curve I'm on and this is where I'm at. So I need know that I need to move left because I need to get my x value to be about negative 2-ish. So I'm going to use the left arrow keys. I'm going to try and find this. It's kind of bad here because, okay, I can just see it. It's kind of bad here because the writing is on top of the thing. Okay, so I'm at about this point of intersection. So now what I do is I just hit enter three times, right? It asks for the first curve, you hit enter. It asks for the second curve. You notice the equation changes now, it goes to y2. So you hit enter. It asks for a guess, and you hit enter. And it gives you negative 2, negative 7, right? So our first point of intersection is negative 2, negative 7. Okay, let's bring this back. Now at this point you can say, you know what, uh, that, it's all hidden by stuff, so let's, let's just increase the, or decrease the y values. Let's move this more to the center of the screen so we can adjust our window. Not up there, we can't. So let's play with the window so things aren't quite as obscured. And so all I'm going to do is take my y min down to like negative 20. Negative 20, right, and then hit graph. And I get a much better view of my cubic equation, right? Now, it's made this a little, little smaller, harder to find, but I think we'll still be able to see it a little better. So second cow intersect. And it's on y1. I'm just going to move to there. That's my second point of intersection. So I hit enter three times. One, two, three. And we get negative 1, negative 9. I guess I can move this. We can sketch it out now, I suppose. And actually, you know what I want to do is I want to see that other point of intersection that's up here, where I think it, it's up there. So I'm going to increase my y max and make it like 20. So again, I'm going to go play with the window. And, you know, I don't really need the negative 10s. Let's see what I can get away with here. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to go like negative six to maybe positive four, I think, for my y values. So negative six, positive four by ones, negative 20. Let's go positive 20 by, now I don't want to go by ones because they're 40. I'm going to go by fives. And then I'm going to hit graph. So there's my cubic, and there's my, and it's maybe just here. So I'm going to go a little bit higher with my y max. So it's a process of uh, what we would call iterative refinement, right? I mean, just try, let's go to 30 here. So just keep trying some different numbers. Okay, so now I've got the definite crossing there. I've already found these guys because they're starting to obscure a little bit here, right? But I've already found them. I now want to find this one. So we can do the same idea. Okay, now if I want to sketch that out. Whoops, don't move that. I want to sketch, as soon as I start sketching, it's going to disappear. Kind of like that. Rough, rough sketch. Okay, that's the negative 2, negative 7, that's the negative 1, negative 9, and this is, I don't know, let's find it. What is it? Who's got it? 323. 323. If only it were 323, right? The day would be almost over. Okay, so I'm just going to sketch, uh, trace along this curve to get about to that point of intersection, which is about there, and then enter three times, right? First curve, second curve, guess. 
<coughs> and there it is, 323. So what's this say? Sketch the graph on the grid shown and highlight the solutions. Well, so I guess you know we can put a dot there. Go negative two, negative seven, negative one, negative nine, 323. Okay. So you're gonna probably have to play with the window. Yes? Um, but so, um, have you solved the algebraic thing without using the calculator? You wait. Look on your timeline. <laughs> What's it say for, not tomorrow, because that's a test. What's it say for Thursday? Um, solving the linear equation for substitution. Substitution is an algebraic method. What's it say for Friday? Uh, solving, linear, solving linear equations by elimination. Elimination is an algebraic method. OK, so wait for it is all I'm going to say. Wait for it. Check each solution. Oh, really? Check each solution by substitution? Oh, my God. <coughs> All right, so what were our solutions? Negative 2, negative 7, negative 1, negative 9, 3, 23. All right, left side equals, oh, wow, each solution, right? Wow, left side equals y. Right, so I'm going to pause. There's like six of these, right? So Okay, and so we have checked all three points, and here's the last point here, and here, and the first two points down here. Great, I just moved my frame. Move the thing up to the top. <laughs> okay, right. So um, there's the last one there. Now can I move my frame back, get back? All right, what moves it? Is it the white one? Yes. Okay. We're back. Solutions to systems of equations. Is negative 3, negative 2 the solution to the system 3x plus y equals negative 11 and 2y equals 5 plus 3x? Yes or no? What do you think? Okay, how do we figure it out then? We substitute it in, right? So what we're gonna do is just do a left side, right side check. So left side is equal to three x plus y. Right side equals negative 11. So three times negative three plus negative two. There's an equals that goes here, right? Because we're working the left side separately. The idea is to keep separation of left and right side. Okay, so that one checks. And then the left side is 2y. Right side is 5 plus 3x. So that's 2 times negative 2, which is negative 4. And this is 5 plus 3 times negative 3, which is 5 minus 9, which is negative 4. And so left side equals right side. So yes, it is a solution to the system. Is it enough to show that it works on one? No, you have to show it works on both, right? Works on one, it just says that point is on that line, right? That's all we're saying. Is the point on the line? I'm pretty sure there's stuff like that tomorrow. Is the point on the line? What do you do? You do this. Right? You plug it in and you see. <coughs> solution to the system. 
5x plus py plus 23 equals 0. Well, okay, we can't have a p and a q. So has that changed on yours? Oh, no, we can have a p and a q, I guess. Oh, right, because they gave us a solution. We're not verifying. We're given the solution, and we're supposed to determine the values of p and q. Okay, oh, so how do we do that? Oh, we have to plug the value for y into the other equation. Yeah. So we just start with 5x plus py plus 23 equals 0. Seriously, I think there's stuff like this on the quiz tomorrow. Matter of fact, I know there is, right? Because we ask you with the k and what's the value of k. Or, or we would tell you, so like, the slope is this and what's the value of k. This is kind of similar. It's not exactly the same. Okay, so 5 times negative 3 plus p times 4 plus 23 is equal to 0. Negative 15 plus 4p plus 23 is equal to 0. 4p plus 8 is equal to 0. 4p is negative 8. I'm just going into way too much detail here. p is negative 2. Okay, you can get away with a bit less work than this, right? I mean, whatever works for you. And you should know by now what works for you. You know, because your mark is like 95 or so whatever you're doing is working for you. If your mark is like 72, then you might, you know, maybe I need to show more work. It's whatever you're comfortable with, but there's a certain minimum, right? So, like, what's the minimum here? Show me this, show me this, show me this. Yeah, you know. And this and this. And this and this. You know, so you, maybe you don't need that. So, you know, yeah, there's... There's, then narrows it down. Yeah, exactly. Don't you, you don't need that, right? You can just you can skip that part. Well, let's see if we can do any better here. Oh, this is probably worse, right? Why qx? So we got four is equal to negative three q plus sixteen over seven. Okay. How would you like to solve this? Yeah, sure. Multiply everything by seven. Why not? Right? I mean, it's either that or we just go. 4 is 28 over 7, and that gives me a 12 over 7, and then I've got the negative 3. But if we want to do away with fractions, right? Because I really don't want a fraction in the end. Let's multiply everything by 7. So 28 is negative 21q plus 16. So 12 is negative 21q, and q is negative 12 over 21, which reduces to q is negative. What goes into 12 and 21? Negative four sevenths. Okay? Questions? Concerns? No? We're all good? Oh, I guess that's it. Okay, that's it. So